Hi, I'm Leif Stevens, cider maker at Noble Cider, and welcome to Cider Blog. Today we're going to be talking about IBC totes, and I'm going to do my best to answer some questions we've received about fermenting cider in them. So this is an intermediate bulk container, or IBC tote. These plastic totes are made from food grade HDPE. They come in a range of styles and sizes. These ones are 330 gallons, and we use them primarily for transporting juice, but the most common size for fermenting is the 275 gallon version. And you need to leave some headroom uh, during fermentation, so a 275 gallon tote will let you ferment uh, about 250 gallons of cider. So when we first started off, we had um, no money. And so totes were a really attractive option for us, maybe the only option. And uh, so we bought eight of them, and that allowed us to ferment 2,000 gallons, which seemed like a lot at the time. We fermented in them for several years without too many problems. And in cider making, they're, they're really pretty common. I, I see them all the time in smaller and even fairly large cideries. And I'll be exploring totes in several videos, but I just wanted to answer some questions we've received about totes. Brandon had a couple questions for us. Um, are you controlling fermentation temperature while fermenting in IBCs? Well, one of the biggest problems with plastic IBC totes is that they don't have glycol jackets. When we were fermenting a lot in IBCs, we were in a much smaller location and we were able to control the temperature of the room somewhat. And we tried to keep the room around 60 degrees or lower and this helped, but given the amount of liquid in a tote, they're bound to heat up a bit during fermentation. And this means your yeast is going to ferment faster and can lead to yeast being stressed out, which can cause problems. Um, also, without jackets, there's no way to crash the cider at the end of fermentation, unless you have uh, a large walk-in cooler and can put the totes into that. Um, I've seen totes that have been rigged up with jackets, but I'm not sure how well that works. In our old cidery, we had a tote we modified by adding a um, stainless steel coil to the inside of the tote. Uh, we connected the coil to our glycol system and we could control the temperature with a solenoid valve and a temperature controller. And this worked uh, quite well. We never used that tote for fermentation. It was just used for um, storing juice. But I think it could work well. Um, but with the coil in there, it might be a challenge to clean it. So cooling is definitely a challenge in plastic totes, but we fermented many, many thousands of gallons and only had a, a few minor problems. If you are going to use IBC totes, I would definitely recommend um, going with a yeast that can tolerate uh, higher fermentation temperatures. Brandon's second question is, how do you guys rack off the lees once cider is finished fermenting? Well, we just used a simple racking cane. Um, we moved the tip from the straight end to the curved end and clamped a half inch tube to the straight end and put that through the opening of the tote. Uh, we used a clamp to hold it in place. Having the curved end at the bottom allowed us not to suck up a whole lot of leaves. But what kind of pump you use uh, is really important. You really can't use a centrifugal pump as these don't have really any suction. If you're on a tight budget, you could use something like a, a little SureFlow. They have quite a lot of suction and they're pretty cheap. Um, but they only pump uh, three, three and a half gallons a minute. So you're looking at a long racking time for a tote. Um, we used one for quite a while. And one advantage of it going so slow is that it's not going to pick up a lot of leaves during racking. Um, if I were to do it now, I'd probably get a stainless steel uh, racking cane. And probably the best pump for racking is going to be a flexible impeller pump, and ideally one that is variable speed. There are some smaller ones uh, for around a grand. Um, we had one, and it worked really well, um, but a flexible impeller that's variable speed is going to be many thousands of dollars. 
Um, but they're a great investment if you're a commercial cidery because they're useful for all sorts of things. We use ours for, uh, for everything in the cidery. Uh, you could also use a air diaphragm pump, um, but they're also uh, quite expensive. We received this question from the letter R. I was planning on using a normal bung bubbler in the two inch hole on the lid of an IBC full of cider, but I heard that it would just blow sky high once fermentation got going. So I came across this image of your setup, but I have no idea how you set this up. Could you let me know what you have going on here and what parts I need to set up the same? <laughs> well, that image takes me back. Uh, we, we bought some replacement lids that have um, two two-inch ports on them. However, I'm not going to recommend this particular lid because the threads on them did not line up uh, well with our totes, and they were really a pain to get on and off. I think uh, we were thinking that a lid with two ports would be really useful for adding nutrients and ingredients, but in practice, we usually ended up taking the lid off. Uh, so I think a lid with one port is fine. M most totes come with a lid that has a, a two-inch NPT port. Uh, if your totes didn't come with a ported lid, then um, they're pretty easy to find online. So we used a two-inch NPT adapter down to a one-and-a-half-inch hose barb attached to some one-and-a-half-inch hose. Uh, which we ran into a five gallon bucket filled with water and some star sand. Honestly, this system really wasn't ideal because it was really tricky to get the lids on and off with a, a hose attached to them. If I were gonna do it again uh, with a hose, I would fit the lid and the hose with a cam lock or tri-clamps so I could easily remove the blow off hose. Later on, I, I actually did start using smaller three-piece style airlocks. And it's true that during the beginning, really active stage of fermentation, your liquid is gonna get blown out of the airlock, but there's so much CO2 coming out that I don't think there's a lot of risk of contamination getting inside. And oxygen's not really a big issue at that stage. After vigorous fermentation is over, you can just top up the liquid in the airlock and you should be good to go. Um, if you want to go this route, I would definitely recommend uh, a large airlock. Speedle makes uh, this one, and it's really nice. Uh, you can also get some really big ones made for fermenting in a barrel. Um, I'll put some links in the description below. I hope this answers your questions. I will try to do some future videos on other aspects of IBC totes, as well as bag and box systems. If you have any questions about cider, making, cider drinking, <laughs> please send them in the form of text, video, audio to questions at ciderblog.com. I'm Leif Stevens. Thank you so much for watching.